Welcome to Star Wars Characters Explained. In today's episode, we're going to go on an in-depth journey, detailing the life and story of the famed smuggler turned Jedi Sentinel, Atom Rand. As always, if you enjoy the video as we go forward, perhaps consider subscribing and joining me for more stories like this one. Also, I just want to say that if you're a current subscriber, hit that bell next to the subscribe button so you're always notified when I release new content. Atom Rand was born and raised on Alderaan, and despite his generally rebellious and cocky nature, his life ran smoothly until the start of the Mandalorian Wars. Atten enlisted into the Republic military and fought in some of the major battles of the Bloody War. He garnered the nickname Jack amongst his squadmates and Atten began to develop a deep disapproval of the Jedi Order. He found that their refusal to enter the war was downright cowardly. By the time the war ended, this disapproval turned into intense hatred. He had to watch his friends die while the Jedi Order simply sat in their temple doing nothing. On the other hand, he developed undying loyalty to the military commander Revan and the other Jedi who joined the war against the Jedi Council's wishes. After Revan turned to the dark side and returned to known space declaring war on the Republic, Atten defected, joining Revan's new Sith Empire, believing that Revan was the pinnacle of what a true Jedi should be. Atten became part of an elite special force under Revan's command, and was trained to hide not only his thoughts, but his presence from force users. Using these skills, this elite force was given the task of hunting down Jedi, so they could be tortured and converted to the dark side. Those who would not break, however, would die. Atten was noted for being one of the best soldiers in masking his presence, and he was also noted for being one of the most ruthless members of the group. Atten hated the Jedi so much that he truly gained pleasure when killing them, and this was even more so when he was able to break them to the dark side and crush their Jedi ideals. During his time with this elite force, Atten learned Ichani combat and he furthered his ability in masking his presence from force users to the point where even the strongest of Jedi couldn't detect him or read his thoughts. Sometime at the back end of the war, Atten was confronted by an unnamed female Jedi Knight. This woman told Atten that he himself was force sensitive and would eventually be taken by the Sith and converted into a Dark Jedi. Atten had heard rumours about people throughout the Sith army disappearing and deep down he knew this girl was right, but he was too enthralled into the dark side and his hatred for the Jedi was too strong so he captured the woman and tortured her as he was trained to do. But before the woman died, she did something to him that allowed him to see through the Force. He saw the repercussions of all the terrible things he had done, and he killed her out of fear. He began to accept that he didn't hate the Jedi female as he once thought, but he deep down loved her for what she had done for him, and he began to despise himself, so he abandoned the Sith Empire and went into hiding. Thanks to his training, Atom was able to mask his presence and he hid amongst thousands of refugees in the refugee sector on Nar Shaddaa, who were stranded after the Mandalorian Wars and the more recent Jedi Civil War. During his time on Nar Shaddaa, Atom began to take jobs and eventually worked his way up and became a smuggler. He smuggled for several years and found himself on the Paragus mining facility, where he was detained in a force field cage for violating the station's security. Luckily, this situation saved Atten's life, as soon after his detainment, the station was sabotaged and the droids on the station killed all organic beings residing there. A short time after, Atten was freed from his cage by a woman named Mitra Surik. He agreed to help Mitra escape the station, and then they would part ways after they escaped. But the situation got worse, as Sith, left over from Revan's now destroyed Sith Empire, had infiltrated the station. Along with another woman called Kreia, and a droid called T3M4, they managed to reach a ship called the Ebon Hawk, and escape the facility, which the Sith proceeded to destroy. They were forced to land on Telos 4, and were imprisoned after they were believed to have destroyed the mining facility, which was the main source of fuel for the planet. 
They were eventually released, but they were forced to stay on the planet as their ship had been stolen, which Atom believed was T3M4's doing. Atom wasn't particularly fond of droids, as he believed they were unreliable and couldn't be trusted, but it's not known why Atom felt this way about them. Either way, the group managed to hitch a ride to the surface with the help of Ithorians, where their ship had supposedly landed. The shuttle that they took, however, was shot down and crashed on the surface. Atten, along with Kreia and Mitra, were pulled from the wreckage by Bayodor, an Eridonian mechanic who helped them steal another ship. They then travelled to the North Pole of the planet, the last place the Ebon Hawk was noted to be. But again, the ship was shot down, and they were this time captured and imprisoned by a woman known as Atris, who claimed she was the last of the Jedi. Atten became agitated, fearing the possibility that someone would recognise him, and Kreia noticed this. Kreia, who was secretly a Sith Lord, probed Atten's mind to discover the truth about him, and despite his ability at concealing his thoughts, Kreia was too strong for him. She learned about his past as a Jedi killer, and used this knowledge to blackmail Atten into staying with Mitra instead of leaving. Atten, who was slowly starting to fall in love with Mitra, feared that she would think less of him if she knew the truth, and agreed to Kreia's blackmail. As Mitra explored the academy that they were being held in, she spoke with the handmaidens that served Atreus, who told her that Atom was very capable in using Achani combat techniques, as he had jumped into an Achani combat stance when they captured him, and these techniques were only taught to certain special forces. When she spoke with Atten, to learn the truth, he deflected the question by claiming he wasn't trained in it, and simply jumped into the stance to trick them. But Mitra could see that Atten was not telling the truth, although she let it go, which Atten appreciated. Atten then travelled with Mitra on her journey to find the lost Jedi Masters, and he became a focal point of advice amongst the crew of the Ebon Hawk. Despite his relatively guarded nature, he slowly began to open up to Mitra, as did she, and the two grew closer than he had intended on their journey. And despite their disagreements on Jedi, Mitra began to convince him that the twisted view that he originally had on the Jedi Order was simply wrong. He even taught Mitra how to mask her thoughts by playing the card game Pazak in her head. The party travelled to several planets, including Onderon, Korriban and Dantooine, but once they travelled to Nar Shaddaa, Atten's secrets began to unravel. Mitra had met two Twi'leks, who informed her that Atten was not the simple smuggler that he claimed to be, and that he was a murderer. Mitra brushed these accusations aside, but needed to get to the truth of Atten's past. Atten defeated two female Twi'lek bounty hunters, known as the Twin Sons, in the local cantina, and he also helped find the Jedi Master Zezkael. Once they had finished their business on Nar Shaddaa, Mitra confronted Atten aboard the Ebon Hawk. He became agitated by Mitra's probing, but he knew the truth would come out eventually, and his affection for her was too strong for him to continue lying. So he told Mitra about his past as a Jedi hunter and his allegiance to the Sith, and told Mitra about the female Jedi Knight that opened his eyes to the Force. Mitra understood Atten's actions, as she too had done some terrible things during wartime, and she forgave him. She also convinced Atten to give in to his Force sensitivity and become her apprentice, and so he did. He trained under Mitra, and learned the ways of the Jedi Sentinels. The time that they spent together training furthered his affection for her, and eventually, he began to realise he was truly in love with her. After Mikau, the disciple, joined the crew, Atten became extremely jealous. He could tell that the two had a connection due to their former friendship, and it was because of this connection that Atten couldn't stand his presence. Although they worked together to help Mitra, Atten always looked at Mikau in disgust, and constantly berated him whenever he mentioned Mitra's name. Either way, Atten continued the journey with Mitra until the very end, and the two eventually parted ways after the destruction of Malakor V, although this wasn't Atten's intention. He wanted to travel with Mitra into the unknown regions to find Revan, but Mitra did not allow him to join, as he was to be part of the foundation of the new Jedi Order. Mitra's companions had become her students, and Atten, along with Bayodor, Mikau the Disciple, Brianna the Handmaiden, Visus Ma, 
and Mira re-established the Jedi Order, but with the new ideals that had been passed down by Mitra's teachings, something that Atten respected and was happy to follow. Atten eventually died, just like the rest, and left his legacy of being one of the founders of the new Jedi Order. Some of you may have realised that I cut out the part alluding to Atten's confrontation with Darth Sion and Darth Treya on Malachor 5, and I've done this because it was part of the restored content mod, not the original game, so technically in the game's canon, it didn't really happen, and this story that I have given you today is very much the original release version. If you want to know about any of the cut content, then feel free to ask, and I will answer in the best way that I can. Atten was always one of my favourite characters when I played the game, but just like almost everybody, his development suffered from a number of content cuts that really would have propelled him forward, and yes, the restored content mod does do him some justice, but I'm sure there was a lot more planned. I'd be interested to know which characters you'd like explained in the future, and if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and as always, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell next to the button. Also, I highly recommend going to check out Docking Bay 94 on Facebook. It's a fantastic group for all of us Star Wars fans to come together. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, may the Force be with you. Always.